Dignitaries, distinguished guests, conference speakers and attendees, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and I'm delighted to be here today in Delhi for the 2019 International Process Safety Conference. As a not-for-profit charity, for over 60 years, the British Safety Council has supported organisations around the world to help deliver our vision that no one is injured or made ill through their work. We've provided support to businesses in India for over 30 years, and I'm delighted to say that in 2017, we opened our first office outside of the UK, here in India. So my presentation today is going to cover the subject of best practice in process safety auditing. And as I don't have long, I'll make a number of assumptions. Firstly, I'll assume that everyone is familiar with the definition of process safety management, that being a set of arrangements established to prevent catastrophic events or mitigate the consequences to people and the environment or assets should that event occur. Secondly, I'll take it for granted that you're all aware that process safety management systems are usually developed around the plan, do, check, act management model. Finally, I'll assume that you agree with the statement that robust and effective monitoring of the process safety management systems is the primary tool in ensuring operational safety is maintained at all times. So what's the purpose and objectives of a process safety audit? Well, the overriding purpose is to determine whether the process safety management system is functioning effectively and to ensure that the health and safety of employees communities, stakeholders, and the environment are being effectively protected. Other objectives include ensuring improved operability, increased safety awareness, stakeholder confidence and assurance, reduced incidents, and the continual improvement of the effectiveness of the process management program. The process safety audit process will also have wider business benefits which will firstly include the identification of areas for improvement and strengths within the process safety management system and across the organization as a whole. Secondly, the audit outcomes will enable informed targeting of resources, focusing on those areas which require improvement as priority. Next, it'll provide factual and demonstrable information for the continual improvement of risk control and the reduction of loss. This in turn enable organizations to monitor legislative, contractual, and sector standard compliance. Direct involvement in the audit will enhance management understanding of process safety management systems and also improve the workplace environment and employee well-being. All of these factors contribute to the maintenance of positive corporate image stakeholder assurance, and provide an opportunity to influence supply chain standards. As I've already noted, the effective implementation of a process safety management system requires robust and consistent monitoring to ensure that continual improvement and the desired objectives are achieved. Auditing is the primary tool in this monitoring process. So what types of audit are there? and what's the model approach? Well, to start off this first party auditing, otherwise known as internal auditing, which is carried out by relevant management and personnel who are close to the process safety management system. The key advantage with this type of audit is the in-depth operational knowledge of the auditors, more informed behavior monitoring, and that they can be conducted flexibly to meet operational demands. However, they have two main disadvantages. Firstly, there's a high risk of bias, as self-interpretation means it's less likely to be too critical. And secondly, that as it's an insular process, knowledge of wider controls used in other organizations will not be available. <clears throat> as an organization, the British Safety Council provides training to verify and improve the competency of internal auditors. This is critical as the quality of the audit is directly proportional to the quality of the auditor. But however competent the auditor, 
We always stress the need to seek expert advice when required. We also strongly recommend the auditor gets actively involved in the relevant workplace arrangements. For example, he or she actually touches the permit, makes personal observations, and gets close to what's being audited. The next layer is second party auditing, which commonly refers to an external audit by a client customer or external organization on behalf of the customer. The primary purpose of second party audits is to determine whether appropriate systems are in place to meet corporate, sector, contractual, and in some cases, legislative standards. Finally, there's third party auditing, which refers to an external audit independent from any client or customer relationship. These often being provided by certification bodies assessing conformance to set standards. Second and third party audits involve independent verification. They can, however, be expensive and time consuming, but through recognized certification to sector or international standards, or even better, to best practice technique, they can provide even greater stakeholder assurance. In our experience, the ideal approach is a combination of both internal and external audits. Whenever all three forms of auditing are implemented effectively with suitably competent personnel, continued improvement and assurance can be expected. So how often and when should process safety audits be conducted? Well, it obviously depends on the size, scale, nature, and risk level of the plant or process, and may well be influenced by factors such as sector expectations or regulatory requirements, contractual agreements, corporate policy requirements, outcomes of previous audits, and incident investigations. Okay, now having established the purpose, objectives, and best type of audit approach, how do you actually carry out a best practice process safety management audit? Well, some of the overarching principles should be considered, and these should include how the process safety management system could fail. Where are the most likely areas of vulnerability? Under what conditions could failure occur? And what are the current controls in such areas? Are they effective? And can this effectiveness be demonstrated? Although the process safety audit will focus on specific operational areas and tasks, there are five overriding best practice indicators which can be applied to the process safety management as a whole. These are firstly leadership. The audit should consistently assess levels of top management commitment together with other levels of management as appropriate. Second, stakeholder engagement. How do workers and other stakeholders, such as contractors or suppliers, participate in the development and implementation of the system? Next, risk management. The audit should examine and uh, control of critical operational areas and define the suitability of controls together with the overall approach to risk management. Moving on to the organizational health and safety culture. What are the expected behaviors of all personnel? And are they appropriate and consistently met? Are the needs of relevant stakeholders considered? Do workers have a direct influence on the strategic process safety system elements? And finally, continual improvement. Have previous recommendations for improvement been completed in a timely manner? So in addition, to these best practice indicators, a robust process safety audit will focus on critical operational aspects, such as the suitability of the major accident prevention policy, the MAP. The audit will examine how effectively the MAP reduces the risks associated with a major accident hazard to as low as reasonably practical. It will also look at the design process for plant and operational activities and how effectively the risk assessment process has been applied during this stage. It'll consider the competency expectations of both operating personnel and management, and also how effective the competency requirements are being fulfilled 
and how they're being evaluated. How robust the asset management systems are will also be assessed, as will the procurement systems for goods, materials, and services. The audit will also cover whether the inventory of hazardous substances is in place and whether it is robustly monitored. Finally, consideration will be given to how process safety incidents are recorded, investigated, and acted upon. As process safety management systems are based upon a combination of systems and behaviors, it's logical that the audit process should follow this approach. The verification of evidence is completed by triangulation of the following. Firstly, a review of documentation. This should be valid, current, authentic, and readily available to the auditor. Second, observations. Operating sampling of tests being carried out, meetings, training and inductions, contractor monitoring are all invaluable as an audit tool. This will verify the understanding awareness of personnel involved and any inherent behavioral trends that may exist across the organization. Finally, interviews should be used. These can be formal or informal, ideally a combination of both. The auditor must allow the interviewee the opportunity to confidently express opinion, knowledge, and concerns. So the immediate findings from the audit process should be verbally agreed during an initial closeout meeting. However, a detailed and comprehensive report should be reduced, produced within the agreed timescales. And for best practice audits, this has to be quantified. The report should include the identification of good and best practice, and also the identification of areas for improvement. In this respect, detailed recommendations, including timescales for implementation, should be provided. If applicable, it should provide benchmarking against previous audit outcomes, sector and international standards, and corporate performance targets. These are all examples of best practice outcomes from the audit process. A structured improvement plan should then be developed and its implementation monitored either through further specific auditing or by other means such as performance monitoring and inspections. So the British Safety Council conducts process safety audits around the world, including in India. Our unique five-star process safety audit is an in-depth and quantified assessment of an organization's entire process safety management system and associated arrangements. If you'd like to find out more about our five-star audit process or are interested in the range of products and services we provide, please do visit our website or find us on social media. Thank you for your attention this morning. If you have any questions, I will be around for the rest of the day. Thank you very much indeed.